Hi everyone, I'm Stan Mallow. Welcome to Paranormal Yacker. My guest on today's show, who I'll be yakking with, is Corby Mitleid. Corby is a highly respected psychic medium and author. We'll be talking about past lives, soulmates, and her newest book, You've Got the Magic, Who Needs a Genie? Corby, welcome to Paranormal Yacker. Oh, Stan, it is so good to see you again. I'm so glad to be here. As you know, Corby, we go back a lot of years, and it's always a pleasure to yak with you. Uh, Since you are knowledgeable in so many areas, for the sake of time, I've chosen to hone in on only a few of them. But before we start, I would love for you to explain to my viewers why and how you gave yourself the professional name of Corby. Corby is actually Gaelic, and it means raven. Raven have always been my birds of choice. They're birds that are brilliant and magical. They are, if you've ever met the ravens at the tower in England, oh, they are beings. They really are. So that's where Corby comes from. Mitleid is also a chosen last name. In German, it means compassion, so that I always remember why I'm doing the work. Wow, thank you for sharing that. Uh, Corby, when did you first realize you had psychic abilities and how did you handle it? Did you fight it or accept it? It's the old I started at as a child. When I was nine, I read a book called The Witch Family by Eleanor Estes. And instead of thinking, ooh, that's scary or ha, 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 I thought, and your point is, I knew there was magic in the world and I wanted to go find it. Fast forward to 1973 when I was a senior in high school working part-time at Spencer Gifts and they had the James Bond 007 tarot deck and I bought it. We were all hippies then. We had our elephant bells, the fringe jacket and the decks. Five years later, everybody else went to disco balls and roller skates. I was still reading because I was fascinated by the stories that the cards told and how they would help people figure out their lives. For 20 years, I just read for friends, making sure I was a clear channel for the information. All of a sudden in 1994, I could do hands-on healing and talk to dead people with no training. That's when Spirit handed me my draft notice and said, hello, you're working for us. Part-time until 9-11, as I watched the towers burn, I knew I needed to do this full-time and I started and I haven't looked back. It's been 20 years. Yeah, well, a very fast 20 years. When they, whoever they are, say, The years go by quickly, they sure do. Oh yeah. Um, I'd like to know, what path did you take to develop your gifts? I lived a stupid but examined life, (laughs) Stan, I really did. Um, I've had a very little uh, professional teachings. Um, Reverend Jane, who is uh, in Pennsylvania, did some of my mediumship work with me, but the rest of it, It was trial and error and always looking at a situation and saying, what can I learn from this and how to go on? There is a book as she moves out of camera that I am going to tell people. Everyone says, I wanna learn to channel like you. I wanna learn mediumship, how? This is the book, Opening to Channel by Sanaya Roman and Dwayne Packer. It's a classic. It teaches you how to stay safe while you're looking because if you're going to play upstairs, you really have to know how to ground, center, and shield to keep the idiots at the corner of Akashic and Karma who want to screw around with you at bay. That was it. It's always a matter of what am I doing? How can I learn? And when a difficult situation comes to you, you don't say, why me? You say, okay, universe, what's my lesson? And how can I teach with it? That's some of the best training that the universe can give you. Excellent advice. Now, just about everyone I know is intrigued about the idea of past lives, soul plans, soulmates, what they are and how they interconnect. Since you are so knowledgeable in those areas, as I mentioned in my introduction, I will now ask you about them. Here goes. When it comes to past lives, there are people who do past life regressions and past life retrieval, which is what you do. What is the difference between them? Worlds, worlds and worlds. When you have a past life regression, 
I cannot stress more more. You must do it through a certified hypnotherapist or a certified past life regressionist because they take you down in trance and you're the one who's wandering around in the Akashic records. If you find a very disturbing life where you're abused or it's a horrible death, whatever, they can pull you out. They can distance you so that you can watch it objectively, but you know it's not happening again. To try and wander in the Akashic when you have no guides like that can be wildly traumatizing. What I do is a totally different thing. If you say, why have I lived with so much abuse in my life this time? I'm the one who goes up to the Akashic through deep trance meditation, pulls down two to sometimes as many as 10 past lives and say, here are your storybooks. So I've done the research, but because it is not my life, I can maintain that objectivity. You can hear what you need to hear about that life, but you don't have to relive it yourself. Both are valid. It depends on what's most important to you. Oh, when it comes to being reincarnated, what is your take on the process? Do we choose our next life or does some outside entity or force decide that? And does karma play a role in it? Well, remember, you ain't you. You are a role, a costume, and a mask that your higher self is putting on. It's, it's actually really very good because when people say, well, my church tells me we only live once, but you're saying we reincarnate, I'm saying both are right. Here's your example. Let's say that you go to college and you decide to be a history major, okay? You can either take gut courses or double major plus lab. One is easy, one is very difficult. Either way, you're going to graduate with that degree. So the choice of your degree is what lessons you choose to learn in this life. That's your free birth planning. Whether life is easy or hard, that's free will and that's your course choice. Either way, you will get the lessons that you need. Oh, when... Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you for that. Uh, when we reincarnate, do we hook up with the same people from previous lifetimes? And do they have the same role in our lives? Or could they be reincarnated as different people who have different roles in our life? Everybody has to come in male, female, sinner, saint, murderer, victim. You have to try all the possibilities when you're in earth school. So of course you're probably going to come in with different roles. There are some people that are soulmates and we do come in with them life after life, but a soulmate is not necessarily a romantic person. And we come in with more than one. In, than one. We come in with our core team. Example, in my life, my father in many, many lives has been my best friend. I knew I needed a best friend as a father because of what I had planned to learn this lifetime. And so that soul agreed to come in as Jerry Dorkin, and I was his daughter. Um, my spiritual teacher that was very close for 25 years, then we had a break, then we reconstituted the relationship on a totally different level. So is she. Um, there are some people who were soulmates, but I'm done with them. We learned together what we needed to learn and I'll never see them again, and that's fine. Now, twin flames are very, very, very different. You don't always get to meet them in this lifetime. Uh, John and Yoko, an example, um, Elizabeth and Philip, uh, people that you cannot imagine them with anybody else, Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward. They're people that those souls are extraordinarily special to each other, and they do come in as bonded pairs often, but not always. If you think about uh, Paramahansa Yogananda, the great guru, Sri Dayamata, who became his disciple at 18 and ran the uh, fellowship until she was in her 90s, of course, they never had a sexual relationship, but they were twin flames. So you got to make that difference, and if you don't meet your twin flame this time, it's okay. It really is. Good. Uh, is there a point where people choose to no longer reincarnate? Or, or is that something that is not up to them, but a higher source? It's up to your soul. It's up to your soul. 
and very often, this is your audio visual aid. This is your soul, which is way too big to fit in these little bitty bodies. Here are the fingers. These are your incarnations, where part of the soul goes in, has a life, and then comes back down. This is what makes the decision, not this. So uh, yeah, it, you don't always go to school forever. Eventually, you graduate high school. And eventually, the soul may decide, yeah, I'm done with learning on the earth plane. And they'd rather do work upstairs with other souls as guides, as teachers. Uh, you were featured in Robert Schwartz's series, Your Soul's Plan uh, and Your Soul's Gift. And I know you help guide your clients with understanding their own soul plan. Uh, could you explain what a soul plan is and its purpose? A soul plan is your blueprint for life. It's what you decide you want to learn in this lifetime. And you asked about karma before. Karma is not carrot and stick, bad and good. That is such a kindergarten way of looking at it. We've done our research and we believe that karma is five things. It's unbalanced energy, which is a neutral, healing, service, contrast, you wanna learn about abundance, you have to have a rich life and a poor life, and healing of beliefs. Your pre-birth planning session is where you decide what you're going to learn this lifetime. You do the negotiation with the souls and you decide how you're going to meet each other, what part you're going to play, so that when you come down here, there is structure. Again, remember there's lots of free will, because it's how you adapt to each circumstance and how you choose to learn that's going to make that difference. But you will graduate with that learning whether you have an easy life or a tough one, whether you listen to what you came down here to learn or you go, nah, I just wanna go play in the weeds. Uh, is a soulmate part and parcel of a soul plan? And if it is, what are the dynamics involved? Think of a white room. I, I love this expression. If you walk into a white room, white curtains, white floors, white rugs, a white piano with white keys, and you're wearing white, you have no idea what purple looks like. It's why the Eskimos have 200 words for snow and not one for palm tree. When you come down here, you need the duality. You need the idea that you may be a very intellectual person, but someone who is a close friend is dyslexic, can't read, doesn't love books the way you do, but uh, feeds off music and art. What are you gonna learn from each other? So those are the dynamics. You are not big enough in this body to cover everything. So people come in and people bring you ideas to think about, uh, work to spark your own thought processes and things to look at. That's why we're all together. Cool. Uh, is there a way for someone to know if the person they think is their soulmate is truly their soulmate? And I ask that because I'm sure you've come in contact with people who said the same thing to me. I know I met this one, they're the soulmate. They're the one I'm supposed to be with. And a few weeks, few months, few years later, they're not the soulmate. Is there a way of knowing, yeah, this is my soulmate? Well, remember, you have lots of soulmates. So you can be with that person for 15 years and, oh, they're wonderful and fine. And then all of a sudden you realize they're not your person and you leave. Maybe you've done the work with them that you need to do and it's complete. They're still a soulmate, but they don't have to be in your body, in, in your body of work now. So soulmates very often are what I call click and lock friendships. You talk to somebody for 20 minutes and it's like you've been with them since kindergarten. You don't attack each other, you work with each other. You always have each other's back. You know, you go back to back with rusty grapefruit spoons and you can fight dragons together. They don't tolerate bull with you. They don't support your problems. They say to you, have you looked at this? I love you, let's look at the challenge, okay? Um, look at Elton John and Bernie Taupin. They're good soulmates, but they have not always agreed on things. Now they're both in their 70s and Bernie is living on a ranch in America and is all about horses. And Elton John is still living the Captain Fantastic life, 
traveling the world, but they're still soulmates, even though their lives are no longer parallel. I think you pretty much answered my next question to you. Can someone have more than one type of soulmate in a lifetime? And what I mean by that is, can a child and a parent, a mentor and a student, or even two friends be soulmates just on a different level uh, other than that of lovers? And you pretty much answered that. Yes, yes, they most certainly can. Your dad and you mm -hmm. and different people with that. Uh, I would now like to talk with you, Corby, about your latest book, You've Got the Magic, Who Needs a Genie? It's a wonderful, insightful book. I loved it with a lot of solid, helpful information in it. And I want to congratulate you on thank writing you. it. And I want to thank you for giving me the honor of writing the uh, forward to the book. Couldn't think of anybody better. Um, for, the, for the time that I was on the road, your shows were always the most consistent. I loved coming up to Canada, um, especially during the Bush administration. It was such a piece. Thank you very much. Um, and I did so many shows. I was on the road 45 weekends a year at peak. And that's seeing a lot of promoters. And some of them were absolute professionals, as you and Ray were. And some of them were, they had their heads in paper bags. They, they just did not understand it. And one of the things that I was shocked about when I would reach out and I would offer help to the new kids and information, and I didn't see it as competition. They said, nobody does this with us. Everybody says, well, if you get, I won't. I said, no, 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 all boats rise. So when I came off the road, it was important that all the information I had learned over 18 years went out to both the rookies and other professionals who maybe wanted to up their game. Okay, I'd like you to tell my paranormal yak viewers what the book is about, your reason for writing it, and what you hope they will gain from reading it. I know we're in the middle of the big bug adventure right now, but eventually we'll all have psychic fairs and holistic expos to do again. So rather than reinvent the wheel, what I've done for you is I have written a book with every single thing I learned about being a road warrior and an A-lister in the world of psychic fairs and holistic expos. Because remember, you have to straddle two mountains. There is the everyday business stuff, doing your records and paying your taxes and all of that, and being a light worker. Do not think earning money makes you a bad light worker. It's part of this world. So what I went through, the first part is boot camp, how to choose a show, what your booth should look like, what you should look like, how to choose a front person. Then we go through how to network with your clients, how to advertise, how to work with other intuitives and vendors and healers at the fair, how to play fair with your clients, how to insist that they play fair with you, how to work with your promoters. Remember, promoters are on your side. The good ones are not just there to put money in their pockets. If you knew how hard it is to put on an expo, you wouldn't think that way. I did it once, never did it again. I said, I just want to show up. Um, and then it also talks about the grab bag. It talks about the legalities. It talks about doing corporate gigs. It talks about private parties. It talks about webinars. It gives you every single piece of knowledge that I have gained in the past 18, 20 years so that you can raise your business profile. Because look, I'm 65 kids, I'm coming off the road. I am ratcheting down my business. It's time for you, the next generation to kick it up. And this is your manual. I was shocked. There is no other book out there like it. Not one, not even close. So it's all there and I was just so pleased to be able to put it out there in a coherent form. You did a great job on it. And what I compliment you on is, uh, it is good for people who want to get into it, either as an extra income or just to do it for themselves, or people who want to organize shows, but you also show and talk about the responsibility of somebody who wants a reading. You cover them all. And to my knowledge, 
Nobody else addresses it. It's either you do a reading, you organize a show, or you um, get, get a reading. There, each one has its own responsibility. And you show that. If somebody wants to have a reading, they, there's a responsibility on their part. If somebody wants to be a good reader, they have responsibility. And also uh, for the organizer of the show, which is the area I was involved with, uh, it's important that, you know, we have good people like yourself and, and you covered them all. And I'm just amazed, but maybe that's a good thing for you and your book now. Nobody else has done it. Well, the thing is, it's so important. Um, I think the biggest compliment I've had has been a lot of seasoned people have read it. Um, one of our mutual friends, Crystal Wind, who was a certified tarot master and was on circuit with me for many years, said, I wish I'd had this book when I was starting out. And that means that I hit the bullseye on what I wanted to give to the reader. A good way to start out, avoid making the mistakes I did, and have your career go up in a sharp, good trajectory. Uh, talk about uh, Crystal Wind, who we both know and love. Yes. Uh, she'll be a guest on a future show, too. Uh, so good. I'm glad about that, too. Yes, because, again, you don't just speak to readers uh, about, you know, the business end of it, but also the moral end of it, their responsibilities, what they have a right to say, what they have a right not to say, to be careful. You are always, always aware of that, that you're speaking with somebody who you may not have the privilege of having a follow-up with. You have to be very careful what you say. And again, not to repeat words, that's not good, but I am, I compliment you on that. Thank you. If I can help educate other intuitives on how to read, not read well skillfully necessarily, but the ethics about it, yes. remember, a reading that I do with a client is going to reflect on every other psychic out there. If she has a bad reading with me, if I scare her, then she's going to see all psychics as bad and scary. So realize it's like we're all wearing the same uniform from the same company. Uh, let's say you work for Spectrum. If you're a bad Spectrum employee, she'll assume that all of Spectrum is bad. If you're good, she will recommend the company to other people. So the book helps with ethics. It helps with professionalism. It helps with what's fair to you as a reader or healer or vendor so that you know what your boundaries are and you get the respect that you deserve because that's a toughie. And you did it, you did it. Yeah, it, I, I mean, I, that's just that you know, I'm telling you now. I read it out once, but twice again, to see if there's anything else maybe you missed out on that I could tell you to maybe include it or put in a future book. And the answer is no, you, 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 you gave it all out to them. Thank you. That they have it in one, 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 one wonderful book. Uh, and I think it's good during this time when people are, you know, home or not going too far from home. It, it's a good read. It's interesting because just about everybody out there, either they'd like to develop their psychic abilities, they want to do it, or maybe organize something, or they want to go for a reading. And you show them, you know, what they should ask, what not to ask, what to expect from the reader. Uh, I, I assume that was your intent with it, uh, to, to cover everybody, you know, no yep. stone unturned you did it all it's kind of a companion book to this one the psychic yellow brick road which i wrote for all the rookies because good psychic guidance is an art and you shouldn't settle for a forgery so that book specifically tells people coming to fairs what's a good psychic what's a bad psychic what can you ask what is not fair to ask when do you know you need to run away because you're going to get taken um, it's a big expansion on the lectures that I used to do for you, Psychics 101, The Good, The Bad, which was, Leos. Which was standing room only, I have to say it, that. Well, I'm funny. And, you know, funny at a psychic fair you don't expect. So, so that was always good. But also the message that you gave, what you said was good. You were funny with a purpose. So yes. that's good. Yes. Now, uh, should my viewers want to order You've Got the Magic, Who Needs a Genie? and I highly recommend they read it, or your other wonderful books, 
the psychic yellow brick road and clean out your life closet, mm -hmm. how can they go about doing it? How did they do that? Well, it's the big A, it's Amazon. Um, we have clean out your life closet in three forms, paperback, a Kindle, and an audiobook, which I did myself. Um, Psychic Yellow Brick Road, again, paperback and Kindle. Genie right now is Kindle only, but we are developing it so it will be published on demand. So if you're the kind of person who needs a book in your hand, uh, within about four to six weeks, you can get that too. That's great. Uh, Corby Mitleid, yes. I thank you for being my guest on Paranormal Yakker. As always, it has been a joy yakking with you. I wish you much success with your new book. Thank you, and all my love to you and to Ray. This has been great. Hi, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the interview you just watched. So you don't miss any upcoming shows, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I would love for you to join me and my guests as I yak with them on Paranormal Yakker.